We're going to take what we know about reduction and oxidation and apply it to these things called voltaic and electrolytic cells. Okay, so first let me just describe um, what this is. And both of these, voltaic and electrolytic cells, are um, a bigger or a class of what we call electrochemical cells. Okay, and in an electrochemical cell, there are three main components. Um, one, there is an anode half. Two, there is a cathode half, and three, there is a porous bridge, and a, which makes a complete circuit connection between the two halves. Okay. So, for example, in my anode half, um, just as one example, copper and zinc don't have to be the only elements I use to make an electrochemical cell, but in this particular example, I have a metal zinc rod. So that is, in fact, a piece of zinc solid as indicated by uh, the reaction. Okay. In the cathode half, there is a copper rod. So just metal, you know, solid copper. All right. So in this anode half, um, this particular reaction goes through. And so we should think for a minute if this is oxidation or reduction, oil, rig, Oxidation is loss of electrons. So when we look at this zinc reaction, this is our oxidation reaction because zinc is losing electrons. And if we look at this half, this is our reduction half because the copper is gaining electrons. So now what happens here? Okay, so again, right? Um, oxidation occurs at the anode. Reduction occurs at the cathode. Okay, so you need to know that. And so uh, what happens here as zinc loses these electrons, they travel through this wire. Of course, you can see they go into, you know, lighting up this light bulb, right? Um, but they will continue to travel through this wire and into the copper half. And now what happens is these electrons are able to interact with the copper ions that are in solution, you maybe have noticed that, that this copper metal rod is sitting in here in a solution of, um, that's copper sulfate. You can see the sulfate ions. Okay. And then this one is zinc sulfate. Uh, the sulfate is less important. Uh, what's more important is the copper ions. And those copper ions mingle with the electrons given from the anode. And now copper solid precipitates on this metal rod. So this is already a solid piece of copper, right? Um, but these copper ions in solution will, uh, you know, react with these electrons and precipitate more solid copper directly on the metal cathode rod, okay? Um, and so now similarly, right, um, in the anode, when electrons leave the anode, then uh, zinc ions leave that metal rod. And you can see that in the picture right here, right? Here are zinc ions leaving the anode, and here are copper ions precipitating on the anode, or on the cathode, okay? And so now this porous bridge becomes rather tricky because we have to have a complete circuit right, for the electrons to flow round and round. We've got to have this thing as a complete circuit. So in this porous bridge, anions are actually able to um, flow through that porous bridge. The pore sizes are small enough that allow anions to flow. And so you might be thinking, well, how do these charges not build up on either side? And that's because of the porous bridge. So, for example, when electrons leave the anode, it leaves this side actually more positive because electrons are leaving. However, to, count, to counteract that, anions from the cathode will migrate to the anode. So, we'll say um, anions, okay, are flowing this way. Similarly, when copper ions are leaving this solution and precipitating onto the metal rod, it 
might temporarily leave the solution more negatively charged. So to compensate for that, cations from this solution, um, and so in this case, it's showing sodium um, because sodium is basically everywhere, I've, hopefully as you've seen in your qualitative analysis, right, with your flame tests. Um, so just trace amounts of sodium will travel over to charge balance these two halves, okay? And so as a result, um, we have this flow of electrons. And now it's not obvious to us yet, but if we chose a different set of metals, we might not get this spontaneous flow of electrons, which allows the light bulb to light up. So we have to choose our anode and cathode carefully um, so that we get the spontaneous reaction. And we'll talk about that in more detail as we go.